Good afternoon, boys and girls. Miss Pavlicek here for Wild Wednesday. Today we have a really neat program for you guys on the science of rabbits. Everybody loves our furry, fuzzy, cute friends. I am thankful for my uh, furry, fuzzy friends and all the animals here at the Science Center. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving last week and you are grateful and thankful for all the wonderful things in your life. And I am thankful and grateful for you, my students. I miss you so much, but I'm glad I could bring you these programs here today. Um, in the beginning of November, we did a third through fifth grade investigation on the science of wind farms and uh, wind turbines. And we said we were going to announce the results for our third through fifth graders. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to present my screen and just show you, let's see here. We just wanted to show you the results of our wind farm project. So everybody here um, in third through fifth grade got to vote after reading some articles and learning if they thought wind turbines were a good project um, for an area of Massachusetts called New Bedford. We had 402 student responses. Um, you can see this data chart here, which is um, a circle graph and you can see it's like a pie graph and pie chart, and you can see that 71.9% voted yes and 28.1% voted no. And there were several reasons regarding animals and the environment on why um, they voted yes or no. So there's your results for that wind farm project. And I'm going to stop sharing my tab now and return back to our Wild Wednesday. And there we go. Awesome. <laughs> so now we're going to get into the science of rabbits. First, we'll talk about what kind of animal a rabbit is. And then we will go in and look at their parts and function. And if we have time, we'll talk about them a little bit as pets. So when you look at rabbits, um, you might think, what kind of animal are they? And the type of animal that they belong to is a group called mammals can you guys say that mammals and mammals is actually the same group of animals that we belong to and we're going to look again behind these little cards that tells us the characteristics or what tells us what a mammal is so the first thing about a mammal has to do with this bone back here go ahead and feel those little bumps going up and down your body yep you guys should know what that is by now that is indeed your backbone or your spine. Very good, backbone or spine. And animals that have a backbone or spine are called a vertebrate. Go ahead and say that. Vertebrate, good job. Now, one of the neat things I wanna show you is I do have a rabbit skeleton here. It has all these little cards on it. But one thing I'd like you to notice is look at that spine or that vertebra all those little bones that make up the rabbit's backbone. You might notice that it's curved, it's very big and thick, and you can look at all the other bones in the rabbit's body. Here's the rear end of the rabbit. You can see the feet a little bit. Those feet down there, look at the length of those toes in the back and those legs. You can see the tail bones even in the back. You'll see the ribs and the shoulders connected to that bone. And then we have the skull or the face of our rabbit. So once again, rabbits and mammals are vertebrates. They have a backbone. Awesome. Uh, the next characteristic is all mammals, their bodies are covered with hair or fur. And here's a little... Um, dark rabbit pelt that I have, and rabbit fur is incredibly soft, and we'll talk about why rabbit's fur is important later on. The next characteristic has to do with our handy dandy thermometer. We learned that with our other animals, their body temperature changes and goes up and down. Mammals are the opposite of all those creepy crawlies. Mammals are what we call warm-blooded. 
and it says their body temperature stays the same. So right here on this little um, thermometer, it says body temperature, and the body temperature should stay the same. And as mammals, our body temperature stays the same. That's why when you go to the doctors, they take your temperature, and if it's not the same and it's changed, then that means you're sick. So mammals are warm-blooded. The next one is... Oh, take a deep breath in and out. All mammals have lungs that they breathe with. And the next characteristic is mammals live on land and in the water. And you'll see a picture of a tiger here and of a dolphin. And believe it or not, both of those animals are mammals. Some of you might be saying, Miss P, dolphins don't have fur but they actually have tiny little hairs on their skin. You just can't see them. They're microscopic. Pretty cool. All right. And the last characteristic is they do not lay eggs like some of our other animals we've met. Mammals have live babies, and their babies have to drink milk from their mothers to get big and strong. So really, really neat. So again, rabbits are mammals just like us, and we share those same characteristics. Now, for those of you who might have pet rabbits at home, or you know, you've heard or seen of different types of rabbits, um, today we're gonna focus a little bit on our pet science center rabbit, but then we're also gonna talk about the wild rabbits that you see in your backyard. How many people have seen rabbits in your yard? Yes. And it's incredible. Instead of seeing them in the wild, you see them all over your place and in your house and in your backyard, all over. Now, our native rabbits are called cottontail rabbits. Take a look at that photo there. And the cottontail rabbits, there are two kinds, the New England cottontail and the Eastern cottontail, but they look very, very similar. And you can see why they call it a cottontail, because it looks like a giant cotton ball there. Now, where are rabbits found? Now, these are found here in New England, but I have my map behind here. And rabbits, I put the red dots on this map. What do you notice? Yeah, and I forgot to put one down here in Australia, but guess what? Rabbits are found all over our entire earth and our continents. They don't swim in the ocean. They live on land, but you can see they're in almost every single continent, even in the really cold continents up north and down south. So rabbits are found all over the place, all over our world. And I'm not sure about Antarctica, but they're very widespread. Now, where do you find rabbits in the wild besides your backyard? Rabbits live in a bunch of holes in the ground. And what do we call a hole in the ground again? Yes, we call it a burrow. But for a rabbit, they don't call it a burrow because it's not just one tunnel. It's a whole city of tunnels. And it's really cool. They call them warrens. Can you say that? And I want you to look at this picture. It's almost like an underground city. There are holes under the ground and tunnels under the ground. And there's usually one or two entrances that the, tur uh, the turtles, that the rabbits go in. And you can find these holes under bushes in your yard or in thicket or thorns. And it's really, really cool. And they'll have an area where they sleep and then tunnels where they go in and out. So that again is called a warren. That is where um, the rabbit lives. Now, for those of you who've seen rabbits, when do you see the rabbits? Can you give me an idea of when you see the rabbits? Yeah, most of the time you see the rabbits at night when it's getting dark. So we call rabbits nocturnal. Now they can be out during the day. They can come out to eat and do their thing, but they're mainly active at night and they are nocturnal. Now, how else can you tell if there's a rabbit living in your yard rather than just seeing it? How do we know when animals are around? We can listen for them. 
But believe it or not, rabbits don't make a ton of noise. They make some noises, but there are some things they leave behind that we can find, especially in the next couple months when it starts to snow. We can look for their tracks. And here is what a rabbit's tracks look like. Let me all turn it this way. These two are the rabbit's front or back legs. These are actually the front, the two little feet. And these are the back feet. And you'll see that they make a pattern as they jump or hop. And here it is again in a straight line. So when you go outside in the winter tracks in the snow, take a look to see if you can identify rabbit tracks. Now the other thing they leave behind are their poop. And I have tons of people, my friends and their kids, that are always asking me to ID animal poop. I love it because the animal world revolves around poop. And look what I brought with me today. I brought some rabbit poop. And I'm going to put it in my hand. I don't recommend doing this at home. <laughs> and what do you notice about this poop? They are tiny, little, round pellets. I call them cocoa puffs. Don't eat them. They're not good with milk in your cereal bowl. But it's an important thing that the rabbits leave behind. Their poop is very hard. I can't even crush it. It's so hard. It's just so hard. And their little pellets they leave behind. They poop constantly all the time. And you can look in your yard for pellets, but I don't recommend touching them. And if you happen to by accident, please make sure you wash your hands. So look for rabbit poops, those cocoa puffs. And the last way you can look for a rabbit in your yard is rabbits eat things like bark and grass. And what you'll notice is this time of year when there are no leaves on the bushes or on the little plants, you're going to notice all these little chew marks on these little sticks. Now, this wouldn't be a tree or something large. It would be a bush and especially one that has lots of thorns. So you can go out and look at the base of bushes for some animal chew. Well, now that we've learned the type of rabbits that we have outside and how to ID them, we're going to meet our rabbit here from the Science Center. And her name is Olive, and Olive has a sad story. Olive was rescued from a car in the Burlington Mall. And what happened is they found a car that was left alone, and I'm going to tilt my screen a little so we can see her more. It might cut my head off, but you guys don't need to see me. We want to see the rabbit. And she was left in a car with another rabbit as a baby for seven days without food and water. That is not kind to animals. Remember how I always say be kind to all living things? Well, they broke into the car, the police did, and they found two baby bunnies in a box with no food or water. And we decided to uh, take care of them and get them healthy. And we kept Olive and the other rabbit got adopted by someone um, from a rescue. So we're going to see if she wants to come out. You going to come out, girlfriend? No? Oh, let's see. All right, let's get her out. Come on, Olive. Here we go. I'm gonna put her little carrier on the ground. Awesome. Now, Olive is about four or five years old, and maybe I'll come around to the front so you can see her a little closer, because she is adorable. There we go. And just like all animals, some animals have different species or kind, and she is what we call a lion head rabbit. And they're called lion heads because they have this mane or this funky hairdo on top of her head. I call it her mohawk. And it's like a lion's mane. You know how the lions right here on their neck have fur that stick out. So she's a lion head. And boy, she's feeling a little pudgy. Are you eating too much hay? <laughs> um, but she is a very sweet bunny. Um, what people don't realize about bunnies is they typically don't like to be held and they don't like to be off the ground. Their bodies are meant to stay on the ground. They don't go real high. They don't climb. They like to stay hunkered down near the ground. Now, the first thing you might notice about Olive is look at the size of her ears. They are huge 
compared to her eyes and the other things on her body. And I'm going to stick her ears up. They will move their ears in different directions to listen for sounds. And that is one of the best senses that rabbits have. That's why they have such big ears because they hear really well. Now, their eyes, as you notice, are fairly small. Rabbits do not have good eyesight. So they hear the danger by using their ears. And unfortunately, Rabbits are prey items. They tend to get eaten by lots of things in the wild. But don't worry, Olive, we would never, ever eat you. <laughs> now, the other thing they use a lot is their nose. Look at that nose. Look at it wiggle. Oh, it's so cute. You're so cute. Now, you'll also notice she has sensing whiskers on the side of her face. And those whiskers help her to sense around in her world those whiskers. Now, the whiskers also allow them to know if they can fit in a hole or a warren. They'll stick their whiskers out, and the whiskers are as wide as their body is, so that helps them. Now, the other thing that's really cute, I'll put her down for a second. The other thing that's really cute about their nose is that's how they communicate and greet each other. So when a rabbit wants to say hello, it'll walk up to another rabbit and rub its nose. Would you like to rub noses with me? Would you like to rub noses with me? No, I guess she's not into uh, saying hi right now. But they'll rub their noses together to greet each other and to tell one rabbit from another. So we tell people apart by looking at people and listening to our voice. Rabbits tell each other by rubbing their noses together and saying hi. So that's really sweet. Now the other thing rabbits do, do any of you there have cats? Do you have cats? Yeah. Do you ever notice what your cats do to mark their territory? And I'm not talking about going to the bathroom. Cats will rub their cheeks and their chins on different things in your house. And they do that to scent mark their territory. They have special things in their cheeks and their chin that leaves a smell. And that's what Olive and rabbits will do. The rabbits will rub their chins on different plants and um, in different warrens and all over their world to sense a uh, scent mark to mark their territory. So if another rabbit comes over near where Olive had rubbed her chin on everything, that other rabbit goes, whoa, that's not, you know, a home that I can go to because it belongs to someone else. So really, really neat. Now, the next thing that we want to talk a little bit about are the rabbit's teeth. Now, some of you might think, what kind of mammal is a rabbit? And some of you might say the word rodent, right? Because rodents have these big front teeth that we call incisors. They're very big and long. And rabbits have these too. But rabbits are not rodents. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you this rabbit skull that I have here. And in the front are those two incisors. They kind of look like um, sharp, flat things. And then in the back, you're going to see those flat teeth for chewing and grinding. So they use their front teeth to bite. Rabbits are called lagomorphs. Can you see that? Lagomorphs. And the difference is rodents will have one set of incisors, one, two, three, four, top and bottom. Rabbits have four. It's double incisors and double incisors on the bottom. So they have twice the amount of teeth in the front of their mouth than rodents do like mice and rats and things like that. And some people call those rabbits teeth peg teeth because they're good at pegging and grabbing. Can you imagine having to take this branch and chew it? That would hurt our teeth. But for Olive, it's really good. Let me put some fresh greens down and see if she's interested in, in snacking while we're, we're watching here. She might be a little interested. Sometimes she's not. Another diet thing that, oh, did you see what she was just doing with her teeth? Did you catch that? Rabbits will groom or preen themselves. And what they do is they use their paws in their front and they lick them and they they bring it over their fur and clean their fur and then lick their paws clean. So they do that with their mouth. And you might see her do that again if she decides. Now, rabbits in the wild, as I said, mainly eat 
grasses, plants, bark, clover, you know, little clovers, like three or four leaf clovers. Um, they love that. And they only eat plants. And we love to give our rabbit here all of hay, and which is grass, whoop, and some vegetables every day, mainly lettuces. And we have an animal that only eats plants. We have a name for that again. Do you remember? That's right. Olive is a herbivore. Herb meaning like a plant. So um, we give her a variety of plants, hay and lettuce. And she also has pellets that are the same thing as hay, but in the pellet form. So that's really neat. Um, now, even though they eat a lot of plants and grasses, people might say, well, where's her water? And even though we give the rabbit a water bottle in her cage, rabbits don't need a lot of water. When you're eating a lot of plants like grasses and clover and dandelion and lettuces, there's a lot of moisture and water in that. So it's not that they won't drink, they will, but they don't need it as much as other animals. So that's kind of cool. Now, the other thing I want you to think about is the rabbit's fur. The rabbit's fur is obviously there to keep her warm and keep her dry. And there's something else that rabbits do with their fur. Now, maybe not Olive because she's not outside, but if we look at that picture of our wild cottontail again, uh, how do you think the coloration of this rabbit, the fur might help it? What do you think? Yeah, you got it. It helps them to camouflage. Again, they are prey items and we wanna make sure that they are safe at all times. So they use that fur to hide and camouflage. Now I'm gonna pick up all again to talk about our next body part, which is her legs. And I usually don't like leaving her legs hanging like this, but look at those feet, those furry, furry feet. The reason why most animals don't have fur on their feet like this, mammals. They just have what's called a pad, which is a piece of skin. But you'll notice that the rabbit has fur on its feet. Why do you think? Why do you think? Well, that's because it makes them shh, quiet. It makes them so predators can't find them. It makes them quiet when they jump or hop. And look at her leg. Even though her leg looks folded up, they're actually, look at this, really, really long and super muscular. Ready? One and two and three and four and five and six and seven. <laughs> Doing little leg lifts here. But you'll notice that the front legs are a little shorter, but they also have fur on their feet. Oh my God, look at that face. And it's hard to see, but she does have See if I can show you them. She does have little claws. And the claws are not for attacking. They're so hard to see because they are small. There they are. So they're not for attacking. They're in the fur there. They're for digging. Rabbits, when they dig those holes in those warrens, they need to scratch and scratch and scratch and dig. And it helps them when they're running. It can help them push on the land and the dirt and run around. And they're very cute for snuggling, snuggle bunnies. <laughs> but very cool as far as their feet. They will also use their feet to stand up real tall when they wanna stretch for food. When food is scarce in the winter, they'll use those legs to stretch up and do that. Um, the other thing rabbits will do with their feet, and I'm not sure Olive will do it, but can you do it? When rabbits get upset, they stomp their feet and stomp them and stomp them and stomp them. Do you ever do that? Do your parents ever hear you stomp your feet? I don't wanna do that. <laughs> Well, rabbits do the same exact thing. And that's part of rabbit behavior. You can tell how they're feeling. See how her ears are sticking up now? She's a little more comfortable where before her ears were down. She was a little bit um, nervous, but she's doing okay right now, which is very, very neat. Now, the last thing I wanna talk a little bit about is rabbit babies. And in the springtime, rabbits will have their young. And what they'll do is the mother rabbit is called 
Um, the mother rabbit's called a doe, and the father is called a buck. It's very similar to deer. And mom will actually pull her fur out and make a nest out of grass and leaves and that fur and digs a hole in the ground around it so the babies can stay in the hole and then she'll cover it on the top with leaves and grass. And you can see this is a picture of some babies in a nest. And mom will only stay on the nest at night so that during the day, predators aren't attracted to it. So lots of times people find baby rabbits in their nests during the day and they don't see mom and they think something's wrong, but it's not. Mom only tends to them at night and she stays away from the nest most of the time so that to keep them safe. And here we have, here's our big aww moment. Everybody, aww, our baby, baby rabbit. So, so cute. Awesome. Now rabbits can live for about um, the average female rabbit, um, not wild rabbit, but the average female rabbit lives about eight, eight to 10 years and some of the males can live a little longer, but the average lifespan of a rabbit is somewhere between four and 12 years. Now people love rabbits. I mean, look at this, this rabbit. So cute, so adorable. But the one thing I tell folks is rabbits are one of the most highest care animals there are. You have hay, pellets, you need fruits and vegetables. They tend to be messy. And rabbits, their urine, their number one, is very strong and smelly and it stains. So if they have accidents, it stains whatever floor or area that they're on. Now I only have a few minutes left, but what I'm going to do, oh, did you see her grooming? Wasn't that cool? What I'm gonna do is turn on my iPad and I'm gonna join this Google Meet and then we're gonna walk over to her cage to put her back away and hopefully you guys will get to see where she lives. Um, our rabbit doesn't live in a small cage. We have her in what's called a run and that's a giant floor enclosure where she can run around on her own. So what I'm gonna do here is just turn on my iPad to see if this works. Just give me a second here. And I'm going to join. 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 I don't know. If that's... All, All right. right. So, so hopefully you guys can see my eye. I'm going to turn it around. Can you all? Okay. And I'm gonna walk to the science center. All right, we're going into the animal room. I'm gonna open the door. There's our turtles, hi turtles. And here is Olive's cage. It's very big. It's very tall, although we don't really need to have a rabbit cage that tall. And she has a water bottle in front and I'm gonna open up the door and we'll put her back down. There you go. Oh, there she goes, so oh, she's running around. Um, we have a box in there for her to hide and she goes right behind it. You going back there, Olive? Awesome. And in the corner is her litter box. It's got hay and newspaper in it, and that's where she goes to the bathroom. We have a second one. We have another little hide house for her. We have her dish with her pellets, which are made out of grass or hay. And we have that um, little food dish there. And then we have some cardboard toys and things for her to chew. And a, we put a rug down so because the floors are like the ones at school, so they're a little slippery. Wow. Um, and then her water bottle hangs here. Um, but we change her litter boxes every other day and we add pellets, a small amount every couple days. Um, and she gets fresh fruits and vegetables daily. She's hiding over here. I wanna say hi guys. Say hi, Olive. Awesome. Olive does travel to people's homes for vacation weeks, although rabbits can be very, very shy and sensitive when they move. Um, 
but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit of her cage and where she lives. And I am just gonna head back to the other room real quick. You know, it might have been hard to see with the, uh, the little thing here. All right. All right. Little feedback there. But there we have it, boys and girls. I hope that you enjoyed um, our, our Google Meet and Wild Wednesday. If you have any questions or things you want to ask me, uh, my email is p-a-v-l-i-c-e-k at epsk 12org And I hope you have a great rest of the day. And next week, we will have Mr. Musselman on Wild Wednesday for an earthquake and volcano show. So that'll be really neat. And I hope you enjoyed learning about rabbits. And I look forward to seeing you again for Wild Wednesday. Bye, boys and girls. Take care. Bye. <laughs>